Good morning, everybody. Glad to be back with you this first Saturday in March. Uh, my name is Ed Samuel. I'm a career coach with a firm called Sam Nova. We're based in Kennett Square, PA, and serve clients in greater Philadelphia and across the U.S. You know, hope uh, and pray that everyone's well and um, you're staying safe in the midst of this pandemic. Um, I'm certainly seeing signs that things might be easing up due, due to the uh, vaccine. So, uh, again, uh, uh, I wish everyone well and, um, and, and, and be safe. You know, I know it's um, tough out there, um, but, you know, I still see people getting hired. February was another good month for our practice. We've helped quite a few people move forward. Um, one person being a CFO out in Harrisburg uh, landed a role. He made a bit of a pivot. Um, so um, uh, 60 years old and greater. Uh, and um but uh, what a wonderful person to work with because he did everything that I was asking him to do and then some and um, and doors opened. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things where um, um, you have to work hard at it. So it wasn't easy. But um, and I could just give you um, so many more examples of some good things happening. But yet uh, there's still challenges out there and you still hear cases where, you know, businesses are shutting down or slowing down. So, so keep at it. Um, you know, um, we also, um, launched a, uh, an upgrade to our website, samnovainc.com. That's www.samnovainc.com, samnovainc.com. Uh, go to the website and take a look, uh, we kind of brought it up to uh, to a higher standard across the board, um, and it is iPhone friendly now. So uh, uh, that was one of the reasons we did it. But you'll see the events have been, uh, really uh, done a good job in uh, uh, increasing the uh, visibility to the events where I'm speaking. So take a look. Um, you know, this morning though, I wanted to kick off a two part series on something that's um, I've been asked a lot. Uh, over the years, and most recently, the University of Pennsylvania um, um, basketball um, alumni relations committee had asked me to uh, come and talk to them about, hey Ed, um, how you know? Can you talk to us about when people need to be optimizing their careers? And uh, so, yeah, yesterday um, afternoon, I'm given the opportunity to talk to uh, that alumni committee. Um, about um, some of the things that I'm going to talk about here this morning when it comes to when and what points in your life and your career should you optimize uh, your career. So, um, again, it will be a two-part uh, series. And um, let me kick things off by saying let's let's kind of look at it from a little bit higher level first, and then I'm going to go into some details about uh, at what points uh, do you have this choice to optimize and, you know, and, and, and so, so as we start, as we start out, you know, we start our careers because we leave high school, college, and we launch our career. Uh, we, and it could be out of high school. It could be through vocational school, technical school. It could through after a four year college, a two year college, and then you launch your career. You start somewhere where you've put a, uh, a stake in the ground. And everybody who launches their career, including me, I started out, you know, my official uh, first official job out of high school. I was a uh, an accounting clerk three um, for a very large computer company. Right, that's where I launched my career. But when you launch your career, it's kind of like we go into this mode of, hey, this is it. I'm I'm here. I've I've arrived, and and you hope and pray that that's kind of is the starting point of um, of a dream job that continues to evolve over time. Now, rarely, rarely does somebody leave school, join a company, start something, and it becomes their dream job, and it just continues to evolve like a, uh, a snowball going down a mountain, uh, and it becomes a gigantic everything, and everything works well, right up to the point where you decide to retire uh, and then do volunteer work at a church at 85 years old, um, and everything's been a dream the whole way through. Your jobs, your companies, your promotion, your bosses, the culture, your pay, everything's worked. 
Um, that I will tell you almost never happens. Um, do people go into careers and stay with one company uh, their whole lives? That still happens. Uh, less so now than maybe 25 years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, but it still ha- it still happens. Um, and it's a beautiful thing when that when 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 that happens. Uh, uh, you know, you go to a company like Procter and Gamble, GE. These are huge companies, and you can continue to grow. Be fortunate enough to work with some great people. Continue to go grow horizontally, grow vertically, make pivots, do all the things you can need to do at those larger companies because they you're allowed to do it because they have the bandwidth to do it. But for a lot of people, we don't land with the large companies like GE. Um, and and then what ends up happening is we have twists and turns. But I will also tell you, even in GE, things can happen to you that will throw you a curveball. So I'm going to talk about, you know, what are the unexpected changes that could come at you that will force you to stop? Oh, I might have to optimize my career. What are the expected changes in other words, when you see an opportunity and you're going to seize upon it, where you're kind of um, in the lead, you're taking charge of that change. And then, you know, we're going to talk about these actions that, we, that we're forced to take when, when, when we have these choices to optimize our career. Uh, there's only really two paths from my perspective. One is a defensive action. Hey, you've lost your job. Well, then you, you have to go do something, but you're on the defense at that point. Um, or you're ready to make a move on your own and you're taking the action and it's very offensive oriented. Um, and, and no, uh, no surprise. I'm talking to the, uh, the university of Penn basketball alumni, um, relations committee, and I'm talking about defense and offense. So, uh, I don't, I did not even plan it that way, but that's how it came out. Um, so let, let's talk about um, when, wh- what, what could possibly happen in someone's career that would stop to get you to say, oh, time to optimize my career, time to kind of relook at everything and get to a better place. And I've already talked a little bit about, you know, when we launch our career, we try to go into that dream job um, uh, and we try to stay there, Right. So these are not necessarily in any specific order. What I did is I just kind of laid it out in a way where um, things can come at you. Um, So let me kind of walk through some of them. Or or actually, I'll walk through all of them. Um, So here's one. Um, There's an economic downturn. Something that happened in 2008, the financial crisis, uh, that affected, you know, 40 million Americans, I believe. Um, And... um, out of work. Um, COVID-19, huge impact, especially in those industries uh, like the restaurant industry, the hospitality hospitality industries, just severe impact. Now, nobody saw these things coming um, in, in it's certainly COVID-19. And next thing you know, uh, you've lost your job. Your company, you know, put furloughed you. Um, that's you know so you're being forced to optimize your career because you didn't expect it you weren't taking some action to leave leave what you were doing your career your job right so great time when uh, to optimize is when those things happen um, the question that I always ask you know like COVID nineteen no one saw that coming I mean no one an economic downturn you can make an argument you could see it coming. If you see inflation creeping up, if you see something happening in the marketplace, we're, up, we're going to take a huge hit in this protect, particular industry sector. One would argue, based on the current administration, that uh, if you're in the um, energy arena and you're uh, uh, not on the side of solar or maybe some of the other uh, uh, less fossil fuel oriented sources, you might want to be thinking about optimizing your career now. Are you going to wait five years, 10 years when things really get bad and you find yourself unemployed? Um, So there's an example. 
So let's move on to another one. And again, I didn't put these in, 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 in some type of uh, strategic order as much as um, these things happen. So, you know, and I pray it doesn't happen to you, but it happens. What happens if you get sick and you're out of work for a couple of years? What happens if you get into a car accident? I had a client um, years ago was a head-on car accident, uh, brain in- injury, um, and re- literally um, um, stopped working for two years. And in the recovery, uh, that person knocked on my door. Hey, Ed, I really, you know, I heard about you. I'd like to get back to work. Well, see, those things happen, and no one's fault. It just, it happened. Uh, you have to figure that out. What happens, uh, you know, I'm working with a client whose spouse, in fact, I'm working with two clients, their spouse has got cancer, uh, huge impact in terms of their career, uh, had to leave jobs, um, couldn't get back to work because of their care for their loved ones. Um, now, how do you optimize your career when something like that is happening, right? You got to get back to work, but you got to leave work because you need to lead work for your, for your family, for something that's happened that's been thrust upon you. In those situations, you're out of work, but you, now you got to go back and you got to figure out if you want to get back to work, you got to optimize. How do, how do you optimize? Um, if you see any of these things coming, then you certainly could take the offensive position, but it's hard, right? You know, who, who would have known a car is going to hit you head on, right? Well, you can't optimize that because, uh, there's, you know, that's completely defensive. You have to react to that, right? But these things happen. Um, these things happen. I had one person who stayed, um, this was, uh, gosh, five years ago. Um, um, a woman had, um, uh, a mom had uh, talked to me and she was out of work seven years taking care of her disabled child. And she thought that was the right thing to do. Um, but now she wants to reenter the workforce. And how, do, how does she optimize her career? Because she, her skills are seven years old. Uh, and really hadn't stayed sharp because she was just so consumed with helping her disabled child. So these things happen to us. So here's another one. Um, you know, you might be with a uh, firm long term, but guess what happens? Um, promises are unkept. Hey, Sue, come to my company. Great job. We're going to bump your pay rate. You know, you're going to get a, you know, a bonus in a year. We're going to move you up. I've had countless people call me up and say, hey, Ed, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure my career is being optimized because I was promised a raise five years ago. Never got one. I was promised a promotion five years ago. In fact, it was promised two or three times four years ago, three years ago. And still here I am five years later. Nothing is happening. You have to ask your question. You have to ask yourself a question. Uh, you went there, because, and if you do all the work that they're asking you to do, uh, and you're not being rewarded, you're not moving forward because of unkept promises especially, well, the question becomes then, do you want to optimize your career? And you're not going to optimize anything if you stay there. And, of course, you can have conversations with your bosses. And there's a whole strategy in terms of how you go about doing that when to do it, how to do it. So it's a longer discussion. But there's a case where do you want to leave and do you want to leave on your own on your terms so you can optimize your career because that advancement is not happening. Those unkept promises are not coming through. So here's another one, especially, you know, we see this every day, almost every day, almost every week. Um, I subscribe to a... Uh, um, um, I guess a, uh, a certain application on the web that tells me about all the mergers, all the acquisitions, all through the organizations going on. Uh, quite interesting, right? Um, but what happens is that every day a company merges. Every day there's an acquisition. Every day uh, a part of the company is sold off. Sometimes we just scratch our heads. DuPont and Dow merged, and they're still in the process of selling off splitting away some of the some of the business units that aren't don't don't align to them strategically um, even companies reorganize right but 
if you're in a company and another company comes in and buys you and you're in one of those shared services functions, finance, accounting, could even be marketing. It could be, you know, it could be sales. It could be anything where there's a duplication is about to occur. I promise you, you need to be thinking about optimizing your career. I promise you, you got to be thinking about updating your resume, your LinkedIn, getting ready and getting assertive. Because if you don't, and I've seen, gosh, countless people over the years, <clears throat> well, hey, <clears throat> it is what it is. And that's okay, too. And they might end up staying with the company, but they also might be very unemployed with the company. Um, and sometimes when these things happen, um, here's another mistake. Hey, Ed, you know what? I know it's I, we're going to go through this merger. We're going through it. I know my job's probably at risk, but you know, I'm going to wait till next June and they're going to give me a severance package because I've been here for 10 years and I'm going to get, you know, a lot of vacation time and uh, I'm not vacation time, uh, a lot of severance in terms of weeks. Um, I don't need, you know, I'm just going to sit tight. Well, you can do that. And people do do that. Um, but I could also tell you, um, sometimes June comes and guess what? There is no severance and you're let go. You get weeks of vacation, maybe owed to you. Thank you very much. End of story. Wow. Sometimes you get a severance. Sometimes you might even get an outplacement service. But I can tell you one thing. The people who tend to be more proactive and get their resumes sharp and start looking way before June of next year and are back working somewhere uh, will always tend to be ahead of the curve um, and tend to do far better. Sometimes you can manage it in a proactive way so that you land with your new company the day they give you the severance check, right? So, so you get the best of both worlds. But I can tell you one thing, that if you're going through a merger and acquisition, you see major reorganizations and you're just sitting tight and not doing anything. I mean, that's a choice you make. That, I think, is a mistake. Uh, you need to get proactive. if You really want to optimize your career at that point in time because there's a good chance whatever job you're in, even if you love it, may end up changing on you. Well, here's the next area. The next area is one that um, um, drives me crazy, but it's it exists. Uh, and that's uh, what happens if you get a bad boss? You know, as you're plopping along in your career with that company, with the job, next thing you know, your boss resigns, quits, new person comes in, um, and, and quite I mean, they don't like the way you smile. Uh, you're butting heads within the first two, three meetings. There's tension in the room. They're going to bring in their own people. Maybe they won't, but a lot do. What do you do? Is it time to optimize your career when, when new leadership comes in? A lot of times we don't do that. Go, yeah, let's just see what happens. A lot of times we should do it uh, because it doesn't work out well. Here's another one. Maybe you're working in a situation where, oh, my gosh, uh, this person is hostile. It's a toxic environment. I mean toxic. I mean all capital letters, toxic. It's, it's brutal. You know, I need the money, um, and I have to work here. But this leader of this company comes into the, you know, the meeting every morning with all 15 of us sitting there, pounding their fists on the table, using the F word. Thinking, you know, because they pay the bills, they get to treat you this way. They get to intimidate you. They get to be hostile. And they get off on it. Now, it's really sad when that happens. And I'm going to tell you something. It happens with big companies and it happens with little companies. Don't think the big companies. So those Fortune 500 companies are immune to this because they're not. I've seen it. I deal with clients like that. But mid-sized companies, same thing. Small companies, you better believe it. Startup companies, yep. So it can happen anywhere. Now, some of it is because of bad upbringing to the leaders that are doing it. Some of it is because they shouldn't be leading at all. 
some of it is for all the wrong reasons. But if you're in those situations, you got to ask yourself a question. Do you want to optimize your career? Do you want to move it forward or do you want to stay in that situation? And I would argue I love to see people get out of those situations and do it confidentially. Um, and, 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 and let the people that are allowing that toxic env- environment, the boss's boss's boss, who kind of go wink, wink, look the other way, when those toxic leaders are really intimidating the people, you know, that work for them, um, I love it when, when people leave and, and let that, let those people suffer, um, for allowing that kind of leadership to uh, exist in those firms. But as it relates to you, oh my goodness, if that's happening to you, time to optimize your career and you can do it privately. You can do it privately and get out of that situation. Okay. Here's another one. Uh, and, and, and let's say, you know, you start your career and this happens a lot for people leaving college. Uh, hey, you land your first job. Oh, I just got the job. It's a small company. It might be a local company. It might be a really good company. But, you know, five years later, um, you're moving up. Next thing you know, <clears throat> the head of the company brings in somebody who now becomes your boss who's only a year older than you. Now, you might be in a situation where um, that works out well. You also might be in a situation that says, well, I was looking to take that job. They brought somebody else in. Hmm. You know, how is this going to work out? Um, um, how is this going to work out? Um, so you might have to leave. You might have to optimize your career to get to that growth, to get to that next spot. Because no, because they really kind of put you in a box. And if the company is small enough and if you don't have the if you have the wrong leader, you're not going to be able to grow. So you hit that plateau. Perfect time to optimize your career. Now, here's another situation. Uh, This happens. Um, You, um, you're in. Let's say you start out um, in corporate America, and then you decide, you know what? Hey, uh, I really want to start my own business. And you leave corporate America. Maybe you want to start a consulting practice. Maybe you're thinking about breaking away from corporate America. To, to go into this thing that, you know, that we call an encore career. Uh, maybe you want to buy a franchise. Maybe you want to open a diner. Maybe you want to buy an existing business. But the point is, you have this entrepreneurial thing that kind of kicks in. And the next thing you know, um, that's gnawing at you. Well, it's a great time to optimize your career. It's a great time to go and make that change and have a plan in terms of how you make that change. Sometimes people get let, let go from corporate America uh, and they have enough money saved up, and they're at a point where, oh, okay, I'm going to optimize. I'm going to kind of make that make that shift now. Some people have never been laid off, but they decide to resign from their company uh, to then start something on their own. Those people are pretty bold when when you do something like that because those are really tough decisions. But again, you're trying to optimize your career. Now, you have the flip side. The flip side is um, you're running a consulting business and you want to re-enter corporate America. Sometimes people actually retire early. And I could tell you a lot of people retire early uh, because, you know, then we get a phone call. Hey, Ed, I retired early, but I'm not the kind of person who's going to play golf. It's just not who I am. And I'm not going to volunteer, you know, um, at the hospital. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I want to get back to work. I got another 40 years in me. What can I do next? So there are other people that have run diners, have run franchises, have run consulting practices. And they're basically saying, hey, Ed, after about 10 years of this, uh, I don't want to give corporate America a shot. I'm just, you know, I'm not, you know. I'm at a point where I, do, I, I just don't want to sell and deliver, sell and deliver and manage this. I just want to go back to corporate America. How, so there's a beautiful time. Optimize your career to go make that happen. See, these are decision points, right? 
Now, I, I kind of alluded to this, um, but what happens if, you know, you retire and you really do retire? Let's say you're 65. Let's say you're 66 and eight months and you've officially retired. Then, you know, what do you want to do next? A great time to optimize your career. You don't have to stop working. You can decide to go to another phase of your life, another phase of your career. How do you want to optimize it going forward? I've had you know so many people <laughs> come out of retirement um, in the, in their sixties. It's, it's fairly amazing. But um, now here's a more difficult one. What happens if you make a mistake, right? And that happens a lot. People make a mistake. They get fired. Uh, there's a, an agreement that you're going to leave the company. Um, let's say the mistake is a big mistake. You actually go to jail. How about a bigger mistake? It's a felony. You go to prison. Um, wow. Um, you're almost forced into optimizing your career at that point because when you try to recover from a big mistake, where you get fired, well, you can still get back to work. You got to work harder at it, and you got to. Um, um, and it's tough. It's not easy. But but you know, coming out of prison, and we and, and I've helped people recently um, do just that, uh, get back to the workforce. Very hard. You got to work triply hard at it, and you also have to have people who are going to have faith in you uh, as you try to optimize your career. And that's almost a recovery. That's kind of a recovery mode. And, and you know, when I'm going through these 11 situations where in any point in time, in all these situations, you're going to wait for something to happen because you see it happening in front of you. And then you're going to then react to that. You see something happening and you're going to take the bull by the horns and you're going to kind of take more of a proactive measure to go optimize your career. Um, but the thing that I really want to stress is that all these things happen to us in spite of the fact that we're trying to shoot for this dream job. And these things happen. It's almost like a moving set of targets that any one of these can happen at any point in time. And it's tough because it seems like, well, Hey, Ed, it sounds like I'm always have to be on guard to optimize my career. Well, that's a um, that's a big part of the message this morning. You better be you, you're, you're doing right. You have to be on guard. Any one of these things can come at you at any point, and if you could see them coming in advance, think about what I'm talking about. I'm more of a fan of being more proactive than reactive. Um, so that um, kind of wraps up this first part of. Um, you know, when do you optimize your career? Um, you know, and um, you know, in our next program, we're going to talk about. Now, if we go to optimize, you know, what are the differences between, you know, a an offensive approach and a defensive approach when it comes to optimizing your career? We'll get into that, and we'll do just to do a, a brief summary of what we talked about this morning. So, uh, all right. Well, hey, you know, we're just about out of time. You know, for those of you new to the program, I did publish my first book at the end of 2019 called Optimize Your Resume, Do's and Don'ts, the Sam Nova way. It's available on our secure website. Yep, our new, newly updated website. You can pick it up there. Uh, it's $20, but we'll pay for the shipping. Uh, just, you know, when you go to the homepage, you'll actually see the book now. You can just click on it. Um, we have well over 400 positive comments, five-star reviews on uh, Amazon. Um, and again, go to, go to our events page to see where I'll, I'll be speaking next. If you're not connected to me on LinkedIn, I urge you to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm approaching 25,000 direct connections. So in closing, uh, join me on the next Optimize Your Career program on Saturday, March 20th. That's in a couple of weeks, 8 a.m. We'll continue with part two of when do you optimize your career. And we'll take, again, a hard look at defensive, offensive plans of attack. This is Ed Samuel, Career Coach with Sam Nova. If you'd like to reach me, feel free to call our main number at 610-274-8214.
Again, 610-274-8214. Make it a great Saturday and wishing you and yours a great day and weekend. Stay safe and God bless.